Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of After Plus modding tutorials and in this one I'm going to be teaching you how we can take an animation and then putting it into the game. This is not going to be a tutorial about how to make your own animations but basically once you've learned how to do that you can take this process and then actually apply that animation that you've made and put it into the game and then animate it properly. For the example I'm going to be using a mama's heart animations which already exist in the game but to show you how we can ac access that and actually put it into the game the first thing we need to do is go under our Isaac May folder Go under tools and here you'll find two tools that are of interest to us. The first one is resource extractor and Isaac animation editor. First of all I'm going to just open as Isaac animation editor to have it open in the background and you can see it's quite a scary program but don't really worry about it. I'm going to explain what we need to know as we go basically along. The next thing we need to do is go under resource extractor and just run this resor resource extractor.exe and what this is going to do is actually put a new folder called resources in our main Isaac folder. And this folder is now going to contain basically everything that there is contained about the game. All of the sounds, all of the graphic effects, all of the sprites, all of the animations, which is what we're after. So if you just open the GFX folder, you can see that there's a bunch of files there named .anm2. In this case, I'm just, I'm just after the heart animation, so I'm just going to find that one, uh, which is called 078000momsheart.anm2, and I'm just going to drag it and put it into our animation editor. Here you can see that something's changed. For example, the sprite sheet's on the top right and you can see that there's a bunch of animations listed now. So if you just open one of these up, let's say Heartbeat 1, and just play it, you can see that if you play this, this is basically the animation of the heart beating. But the ANM2 file only contains the information in which order the sprites or the frames should appear. The actual sprites or how this animation looks like is located under the sprite sheet and you can find the sprite sheet by looking at the path which is just... which is located basically where the sprites are located and of course because you have can have multiple sprites in one animation um, this is you have to kind of check where it's going but in this case what's going to happen is we have to go under bosses classic and here if you just go scroll down to this particular file you can find that the png file is located here and basically this png file just contains how the particular sprite looks like and then the animation file tells us how we should in which order we should display those sprites in order to actually make the animation happen. So if you just grab both of these files, the anm2 file and the, the, this png the spreadsheet file, we can go back to our modding folder. I've created a new mod called animation, just a new folder called animation. And I've put both of these files under resources, gfx, animation. First of all, here I put the animation file and then I basically mimic this path. So I created a new folder called bosses classic and here I put my sprite sheet. Now that I have both of these files here this is basically done for the resources folder. Now the next thing we have to do is go under our content folder and edit the entities to XML or just add it if you don't have it yet. So if you just open this up in our in any editor that you like you can see that this XML is quite a bit scarier than the ones we've come up so far. But the only th three or two things you have to really worry about are the name the nm2 path and the nm2 root and maybe if you have multiple animations you have to worry about the id as well because the ids on different animations can be the same so first of all is the name this is basically how we name our animation how we're going to reference it in our lua file the next thing is us basically telling what the path or what the, our file name is in this case i just named momsheart.anm2 and the root attribute is basically telling us where this animation file is located so if you just do this and just go back to our content folder or our resources folder and you can see basically the anm root is gfx animation and here is our uh, anm2 file and then the path to this anm file or the name of this file is momsheart.anm2. This is exactly what we have set up here and this is important because this has to be set up otherwise the game won't really know where to search for these files. And the next thing I just named it is called momsheart. Okay, now that we have this set up and basically that you get any animation that you want to worry about, uh, what we can do is basically go to our code. So what we do, you can see that this code is rather short, but this is basically just to showcase how it works. The first thing is uh, we again just register the mod, I called it animation. Uh, I said the API number is still one, so this is just one for the time being. The next thing I do is get the entity type by name. So this is the name we've set up here, mom's heart and just save this entity in our variable called heartbeat. And this is basically our animation file in some sense. Basically the heartbeat contains all of the information where the animations are, where the sprite sheet is and how to actually play certain animations that exist in the, uh, the, the animation editor. Uh, the next thing I have is the heart entity. And basically when, when we spawn this particular sprite, 
it's going to create a new entity. And for the time being, I'm just creating a new variable called hard entity in which I'm going to save this. Uh, then we have our update function, and this is basically called every single update. I'm just tying it to the callback mc post update. And every time update happens, so every about every frame, this function is also going to get called. And based upon that, something's going to happen. So the first time we actually get to the update function, we're going to check if hard entity is nil, which means does it exist yet? In this case, of course, if, if you just imagine that this is the first time this function is called, it doesn't exist. We get the player by saying Isaac.getPlayer, and then we spawn the heart entity. And we use the Isaac.spawn function. And the first attribute here uh, is which entity we're spawning, then it's the variant, then it's the subtype. For the time being, this is not important, so I just put zero. Uh, then you say at which position, I just say player position, then the velocity is about how fast it's moving, and which entity is actually spawning this heart entity. And we put all of these things in. Uh, we actually get what this function returns, is it actually spawns it in the game, but it also gives us back the reference to that entity. In this case, uh, like I said, I just called it heart entity. And now that it's created, on the next time this function is called the update function, uh, which is going to happen about every frame, like I said, and this so the next frame, what's going to happen, again, we're going to check if the heart entity is nil, and because at this point it exists, it isn't nil anymore. So what's going to happen, we're going to go in this else block, uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the sprite out of it. So we're going to say hard entity get sprite. And if you're wondering about how I know these functions or where I got them, I'm going to show you in uh, this uh, in, in the Afterbird plus lore reference guide or documentation or how you want to call it. So if you go, for, for the time being, this is just an entity. And entities have a bunch of attributes, a bunch of functions, but one of them is called get sprite. If I just search for it, uh, you can see that if you just say get sprite, uh, we're gonna. What's gonna come back is the sprite class in some sense, or a sprite object in this case, because we have an actual thing on our hands. Uh, and it, when we have the sprite object, uh, which is basically our sprite, how it looks like, we can animate it and do things with it. And to see which func functions are available to us, we can open the sprite class, which I already have open here, uh, but I open it just 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 for the hell of it. Uh, you can see that, again, the sprite class also has a bunch of functions. You can say it's finished, we can use the play function, we can set the frame of the particular animation, we can render it, we can check if it's loaded, we can get the file name, we can play a random animation, uh, we can set a bunch of attributes like offset, like scale, so how big it is, we can rotate it, we can flip it about its axis, we can even set the playback speed about how fast it's actually playing. So now that we actually have the sprite in our sprite attribute, uh, I mean, now in the sprite variable, we can check if the heartbeat one animation is playing. And in this case, if it's not playing, we're just going to play it. And basically what would happen if it, I didn't have this check, every single frame, the sprite would play the heartbeat animation. And it just it would just keep happening, you know, it would just play one frame of animation, the function would get called again, and then it would play the first frame of animation again. So it would seem like it's stationary when obviously we don't want it to be. So what we do is just we play the animation, and then we check by using the function sprite is playing, and then of course the animation name. And in this case, like I said, it's heartbeat one. And you can get the animation name by opening the animation editor and looking at the animations on the right. So in this case, I'm going to be playing this exact animation that you see here. Uh, so the heartbeat one animation. Of course, if it's not playing, I'm going to play it. And as soon as it stops playing, this is going to return false. And th this is going to be true, if that makes sense. And then we're going to play it again. So let's go into the game and I'm going to show you how this works. Greetings and welcome to the game. And the first thing you see here is again, we have some text on the screen, which means that so far it works. Uh, but you can see that the heart is not spawning, which might be odd. Well, basically on the first, uh, the first time you start the game, the heart is going to spawn, and then as you restart the game, it's actually not going to be there anymore. If you want to get the heart to spawn, we actually have to run the mod again. So we basically clear the cache and clear all of the variables. We're just going to say Lua mod, animation in this case. And as soon as I enter the debug console or exit the debug console, uh, the, the big heart is going to spawn and actually start beating. So let's see that happen. You can see on our position, the heart spawn and it's actually beating. Uh, because this is just an effect, this heart doesn't have any properties like collision damage, is not spawning enemies, uh, etc. But what you could do if you wanted to, you can actually add all of those attributes on top of the entity. As I, sh as I showed you in some of the previous video and this one as well, you can go under the reference manual, find the entity property and then actually set all of those properties there. Or if you just want the heart to spawn in the middle of the room, you can actually make your own mob's hard boss fight, you know, or maybe change some things around. So with that, you can actually do quite a lot of things. 
So this is the end of this video and I really wanted to show off animations because I think they're a very powerful tool to actually show you how the game works and actually make things a lot more interesting. Animations can be applied in a variety of cases. Maybe if you have a familiar you can animate the familiar to shoot and you would just say play this animation shoot and then you would shoot up obviously. Or what you could do is create a new particle effect and every time you kill an enemy instead of them exploding into blood and, and guts what you could do is make them explode into candy and skittle for example. And all of these things can be done just basically by playing with animations you would just spawn an entity uh, you would play that particular animation every time an enemy dies at their position and, and then then you could go and do things onwards and like i said i think animations are a very powerful tool and in this case they're actually quite easy to use once you actually get a hang of it I actually make your own animations like i said you would have to know and use the animation editor and there's a bunch of tutorials how to do that and once you get used to it it's really not that hard uh, but I hope you can see the, the value that animations hold. And even if it's just changing all the animations that already exist in the game, uh, you can already do a lot of things with that. And like like you saw in this video, you can make your own boss, uh, your own mom's heart boss fight. And I think that's a very exciting prop proposition when you actually think about it. With that, with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.